The Watership Down podcast is intended for listeners who are familiar with the plot. There may be spoilers. This episode is scripted by John Ruths, Newell Fisher and Leah Michaela. It includes adapted text from John. Hello and welcome to the Watership Down podcast episode 98 in which we'll be looking at the fourth story from part one of Tales from Watership Down, chapter four. The Fox in the Water. First though, a listener called Constantinos has commented on episode 10 on the YouTube channel that the rabbits of the Warren of the Snares, such as cowslip, silverweed, laburnum and kingcup, are named after plants that are harmful to rabbits, while Strawberry, the rabbit who joins our heroes, is not. An interesting aspect of rabbit names in this story I had not realised before. Anyway, let's meet a fox. Part 1. Chapter 4. The Fox in the Water. In the burrow behind him he could hear Bluebell, who was apparently telling the doze a story. Good idea, he thought. Keep him happy. More than I could do if I had to sit there. So then, Elephrera said to the fox, Fox you may smell, and fox you may be, but I can tell your fortune in the water. Suddenly Woundwort spoke. Flaily, he said. Why do you want to throw your life away? I can send one fresh rabbit after another into this run if I choose. You're too good to be killed. Come back to Ephrafa. I promise I'll give you the command of any mark you like. I give you my word. Silfle cracker, Wembley ra, replied Bigwig. Aha, said the fox. Tell my fortune, eh? And what do you see in the water, my friend? Fat rabbits running through the grass? Yes, yes. Very well, said Woundwort. But remember, Thlaley, you yourself can stop this nonsense whenever you wish. No, replied Elachrera. It is not fat rabbits that I see in the water, but swift hounds on the scent, and my enemy flying for his life. That was an extract from pages 6 and 7 of chapter 47, The Sky Suspended, in the original novel of Watership Down. It includes all of the passages from this story that were written by Richard Adams in 1972. Bearing in mind what we now learn of the full version of the story, its juxtaposition with the exchange between Bigwig and Woundwort at the story's climax seems appropriate, with Woundwort, the rabbit who acted like a member of the Elil, being about to be the subject of one almighty elachrera like trick. We only know that what follows is the full version of this story, because Richard Adams tells us so in the introduction to Tales from Warship Down. The actual title of the story, as well as the next one, The Hole in the Sky, are only mentioned in Warship Down at the end of chapter 30, where Dandelion suggests the fox in the water as a tale to keep the root spirits up during the journey to Ephrafa, before Bigwig shuts the conversation down by insisting on the far less cheerful Elachera and the Black Rabbit of Inlay, as he is about to enter Ephrafa on his mission to liberate those, and seems to feel the need to hear it. The pre-chapter quote is from Br'er Rabbit. Br'er is a kind of verbal shorthand for brother, saying Br'er just implies that the character is male. The quote is from the short story Br'er Rabbit and the Tar Baby, where a tar baby is pretty much what it sounds like. It's a doll made from tar and turpentine. If you physically engage with a tar baby, you'll become entangled in it. The metaphorical aspect of this seems fairly obvious. The quote, Den Br'er Fox know that he been swap off mighty bad, comes from the end of the story. Br'er Fox has essentially entrapped Br'er Rabbit because of the tar baby trap. Br'er Rabbit tells Br'er Fox that he can do anything to him, but to please not throw him in the briar patch. Of course, Br'er Rabbit has used a sort of reverse psychology on him, and Br'er Fox does justice, and he escapes. At the very end, Br'er Rabbit essentially fools Br'er Fox, who also becomes aware of this. It's always a bit more fun when the person you're pulling one over on gets to realise it. Much like most Elephrera stories, Br'er Rabbit usually indicates that if you're not strong, then you'd better be smart. The stories are often instructional. The quote, like most from Br'er Rabbit stories, is spoken in a very unique African-American style of vernacular. What can be implied is that Br'er Rabbit is meant to be African-American, and this would make Br'er Fox white. Taken back to the days of slavery in the American South, Br'er Rabbit can be seen to represent a slave, and Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear represent white slavers. As Br'er Rabbit is getting away, he states, <coughs> Bred and born in a briar patch, Br'er Fox. Bred and born in a briar patch. This essentially means something like, haha, fooled you again, see you later. 
You'll also note that it is very similar to the born and bred in the briar patch quote from Richard Adams' medical namesake, Dr. Adams, near the end of Watership Down, when Hazel is saved. It makes for a good time between the two books. Joel Chandler Harris was the compiler of Blair, Blair Rabbit stories. He was white from the American Old South and lived in, from 1848 to 1908. Because of this, the term cultural appropriation gets thrown around at times when his name comes up. Joel Chandler Harris wrote nine books that, crea that contained Br'er Rabbit stories, with one containing 52 of them. In the UK, Enid Blyton also wrote Br'er Rabbit stories, and it seems reasonable to suggest that this is where Richard Adams learned about them. The pre-chapter quote certainly fits this chapter exceedingly well. In some ways, this is Adams telling a Br'er Rabbit story, but in his Watership Down world. We begin, as usual, with a conversation on Watership Down. This one is between Dandelion and Bigwig on the subject of foxes. In particular, the problems they can cause when they take up residence near a warren. The story is a simple one. A fox, in fact a pair of foxes, move in near Elacherar's warren. Foxes are one of the worst enemies that rabbits have. They are also known to be somewhat clever or wily, but the very strong odour of their urine can give them away to other animals. Foxes are often aware of the direction of any wind, so it may make it a point to hunt towards the direction of the wind. Fox urine is so strong that we humans sometimes use it to mask our scent from other animals. Foxes are also very dangerous because of their overall speed and agility. They can move in a flash and can run fast for a longer period than a rabbit, though rabbits are faster over a shorter distance. To have one near a warren would certainly cause any warren a great deal of stress, and in no case could a rabbit ever fight a fox. To a fox, being near a warren is to be near a source of food. This story has somewhat of an Aesop's fable feel to it, as Elohar R, having left his warren to think about what to do about the foxes, gives free and friendly advice to other animals. More of the kind of thing that Hazel might have caught on to as a young rabbit, the kind of thing that made Hazel amenable to befriending other animals, even when there might not be an immediate benefit. Meanwhile, back at the home warren, even Rabscuttle, his captain of Owsler, does not know where Elohar R is. Some there begin to think that Elohrara has abandoned them to find a new warren. First, Elohrara teaches Yona the hedgehog not to fear humans when he goes to find slugs in their gardens, as they all welcome him doing so. The slugs have focused their activity on the rich pickings to be had in such gardens, and humans will not mind the presence of a creature whose focus is them rather than the vegetables they target. Elohrara wanders on, still perplexed by the problem of the foxes. Next he encounters another rabbit warren, who are puzzled about how to get th through or under a fence the farmer has set up to protect his crops. Elohera advises them to give up. Next some rooks land and say they intend to fly in over the fence and strip the crops. Elohera advises them not to, as the human is lying in wait with a gun. The chief rook ignores his advice and several rooks get shot. After that the rabbits heed Elohera's advice. Elohrara wanders on for some time, giving advice to other creatures, but still unsure what to do about the foxes. Eventually, he ends up on a common, where, after resting, he encounters a snake who is feeling very cold. Elohrara realises that the snake is a cold-blooded animal and needs to bask in the sun in order to gain more energy to hunt. He contrasts the snake with himself by saying he has a pulse, though snakes must also have a heart that would give them a pulse. This eureka moment leads to the snake essentially teaching our rabbit hero how to hypnotise other animals, as a gift in return for his help, as well as that he has given to other creatures. The snake teaches him the staring trick that can make an animal essentially go tharn. Elohera even seems to have taken what the snake taught him and taken it to the next step. The snake's stare essentially causes the staree to be compelled to hold its gaze and not to be able to avert it. If I stare at you, you'll simply have to look back at me because you can't look away. It'll feel like your willpower has subsided. But, the snake warns, this power has to be used quickly, as it does not last. Bidding farewell to the snake, Elohera starts to make his way back to his warren. The following day, he reaches a brook with a small bridge over it. Strangely, in chapter 33 of Watership Down, the Great River, we learn that Hazel, and presumably others in their group, does not know what a bridge is. So how could this story possibly make sense? Anyway, I digress. Elohara waits on the bridge, knowing what will happen. Eventually, one of the foxes comes along and lies down next to Elohara, licking its lips. The fox evidently means to eat Elohara, but instead, Elohara says he will tell the fox's fortune in the water. 
This is the part of the story Bigwig hears Bluebell telling behind him in the original novel Watership Down. Elohera, using the gift of hypnosis the snake gave him, replaces the fox's preferred imagery of the fat rabbits in the grass with that of hounds descending upon the fox, and this frightens the fox so badly that it half falls off the bridge into the brook. The fox drags itself out on the further bank, and neither it or its mate are seen near the warren again, or any other foxes for that matter, as the story gets around. Is it canon? John Ruth writes, quote, Elechera once again shows us that he can solve just about any problem. If nothing else, he is very resilient and never really gives up. I can see where a story like this, much like Br'er Rabbit stories, encourages wild rabbits, rife with disadvantages, to nonetheless outthink their adversaries and find clever solutions. A bit more on Br'er Rabbit. In years past, it was much easier to commit this kind of cultural and even intellectual theft, what we often now call cultural appropriation. In our current time, it seems that past instances are being identified more and more. The negative issues in the US dealing with having a past that involves slavery is still just under the surface. Many unresolved issues and many opinions on how to do this or do nothing. It's strange, but I live in a country that is always at odds with itself over its own history. Coming to grips with terrible events of our past that we just can't seem to agree upon. There are many other similar issues, and they nearly always centre around things like race, national origin, culture or religion. The only common denominator is that they are always ugly. To sum it all up, Rare Rabbit stories are an unexpected positive outlet to the negative treatment of black people by the white majority. From a purely metaphorical perspective, the characterisations that make up the Br'er Rabbit stories are pure genius. I'd love to know just how much of an influence Br'er Rabbit was on Elech Rara. Who made up Br'er Rabbit? I'd guess that it was one person's idea that took off and then grew into a cultural thing. Wouldn't it be neat for that person to know that the character he or she made up had an influence on a certain English rabbit? named Elech Rara. End quote. Leah Michaela adds, quote, Elech Rara and Fox in the Water seems to have taken a shift into a bit different atmosphere than the tales before it. Describing Elech Rara as a wise man who wonders giving good advice to other rabbits here and there, it resembles a bit more some religious stories about prophets and saints than previous wonder tales. That tale seems to have been written around the quotes from Warship Down, and I can't help thinking that the story of the trickster Elech Rara in the style of original Warship Down would have been different from the now presented story of a prophet Elech Rara in Tales from Warship Down. Fox in the Water and Hole in the Sky seem to have written, been written for the titles suggested as options for the story of Elech Rara and the Black Rabbit of Inlay in the 30th chapter of Warship Down. That's some food for thought, how either of those would have affected the mood or outcome of Bigwig's Ephraphon adventure, had either of these stories been told in the beginning of it. End quote. So, is this story canon? Well, given that it is partially quoted at the climax of the original novel, and especially given the reference to Br'er Rabbit made by Dr Adams when Hazel is released back into the wild after Woundwalt's defeat, on balance I would argue yes canon. Although the actual episode that gives the story its title seems fleeting and perhaps not fully worthy of the title. Given the actual content of the fully written story, wouldn't something like the story of Elech Rara and the snake's gift have been more appropriate? But for all that, still canon, in my opinion. What do you think? Next time, we encounter the first of the two most possibly unnerving of the tales, as we meet the hole in the sky. Mm -hmm.